the bishop. Shall we rise on our feet and start to appreciate God this moment? And lift up your voice and appreciate God as you dare today, not to by mistake. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray for today's service. Lift up your voice and pray for the presence of God that He will be with me in the name of Jesus. That whatever thing will they do, that the grace of God will do with me. Pray for all those on their way coming, that God will bring them safely to this morning service. That God will bring them safely. Whatever means of transportation they are using, God will be the heavenly driver. All those on their way coming, lift up your voice and pray for them. That God will fill this place this morning in the name of Jesus. Pray for God's servants, that God will use him like never before. That the word is coming from this exalted altar. That the word will be a deliverance unto you. That the word will bring a breakthrough unto you in the name of Jesus. Pray as you are here this morning. Whatever problem you come with, whatever challenge you come with, you will go with a solution in the name of Jesus. And God's Sabbath is going to stand on this altar and deliver his word. That word will bring a deliverance. That word will bring a breakthrough. That word will bring a healing in the name of Jesus. Whatever you know God, you are trusting for. As you are here this morning, the God of this commission will settle your case in the name of Jesus. Pray for the presence of God. That God of blessed. The Bible says, we are two or three are gathered. If you call on me, I will do there. I will do great and mighty things. Pray, pray this morning that the presence of God will fill this auditorium. That this place of God go fill of God with his people in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray that God will use the servant. That God will use the servant as a vessel tonight. That God will use the servant. Lift up your voice and pray. Blood, lift up your voice and pray. That this service will be a remarkable service in your life in the name of Jesus. That whatever sin you are trusting God for, the God of this commission, go here you cry. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name of pray. If you get a testimony, go ahead and enter the church and give that your name in Jesus' name. As you welcome your praise and worship. Put your hands together for Jesus. Continue to clap for the Lord. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Lord, we worship you. Thank him for bringing him here this morning in good health, no destruction, nothing happened to you. Worship the Lord as if you appreciate him this morning. Lord, we appreciate you. We bless your name, Jesus. You are worthy for power. Blessed be your name, O God. None is like unto you, Father. We thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, for your guidance, O God. We exalt your name. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give
what a privilege and honor to stand before you this morning, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We give a praise to the Lord. We exalt your mighty name. You were exalted above all the names.
We exalt your name because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Your word is what changes our direction when we are going over to the wrong way. Your word directs us to your right path. We thank you. We thank you for your word because your word is yea and amen. Your word can make a whole difference in our life. Father, we thank you, Lord. Jehovah, we bless you for your word. For your word. He said, I found your word and I eat them. They nourish my soul. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. That you keep receiving in a daily basis. Uh, that corrects, that rebukes, that chastens, that directs, uh, that restores, that heals, that empowers. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Father, Lord, your word, oh God, who I need. We bless you, Father. Jehovah, we give you praise. Thank you for your word. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for the Lord is worthy. Make it louder and better for the Lord this morning. I know this morning you have a testimony. Somebody is right at the back. Go there and you will share your testimony with us. This morning, God's presence will lead you in your journey, concerning your journey, in your business, in your career, God will lead you, and God will give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus. Rest is assured for you. God's presence is assured for you. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14, Exodus chapter 33, verse 14 said, and he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give you rest. This morning we are going to lift up our voice and pray. Say, my father, my father, let your presence lead me in the journey of 2018 and give me rest in every battle. Lift up our voice and pray. My Father, my Father, let your presence, O Lord Jehovah, lead your people, O Lord, lead your people, O Lord, lead your people, O Lord, in all the journey, O Lord, of 2018, O Lord, lead them, O Lord, your presence, let your presence go with them, O Lord, concerning their endeavor, concerning their endeavor, whatever they are doing, O Lord, in their business, O Lord, let your presence go with them, O Lord, O Lord Jehovah, in their workplace, let your presence go with them, O Lord, Lord Jehovah, we pray for your presence, O oh Lord. We pray for your ever abiding presence, O oh Lord, to keep your people, O oh Lord, to watch over your people, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Your presence, O oh Lord, make the enemy to be afraid of your people. Lord Jehovah, we command our presence, O oh Lord. We command your presence, O oh Lord, your presence to go into your people, O oh Lord, in every journey, O oh Lord, in every journey they embark on, O oh Lord, in 2018. We cry for your presence, O oh Lord. Don't don't leave your people behind, O oh Lord. Don't leave your people behind, O oh Lord. With your presence, let your presence lead them, O oh Lord. Let your presence lead the ministry. Let your presence lead the commission, O oh Lord. Lead us, O oh Lord. Direct us, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for your leading. We pray for your direction in our homes, O oh Lord. Lord Jehovah, in their family, we pray for your presence to so lead them, O oh Lord. Lead them in their workplace, O oh Lord. Lead them in their family, O oh Lord. Direct them, O oh Lord. What's to do part time, O oh Lord? In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord Jehovah, lead your people, O oh Lord. Lead your people, O oh Lord. Let your presence, O oh Lord, lead them, O oh Lord. Lead and direct them, O oh Lord, as you lead and direct your people. Give them rest, O oh Lord. Rest in every battle. Rest in every battle. Rest in every battle. You grant Solomon rest, O oh Lord. Grant your people, O oh Lord. Rest, O oh Lord. Whatever is causing unrest, O oh Lord. Unrest in their head. Unrest in their finance, unrest in their family, we come against it, O oh Lord. We come against it, O oh Lord. Whatever force that be in that them, O oh Lord, in that them in their family, in that them in their career, Lord Jehovah, we command all around rest about, O oh Lord. All around rest about, O oh Lord. All around rest about, O oh Lord. We command rest, O oh Lord, in their affairs, O oh Lord. Rest in their homes, O oh Lord. Rest in their homes, O oh Lord. Rest in their offices, O oh Lord. Rest in their family, O oh Lord. Rest in this capital. 
salvation in the name of Jesus. We command us, O Lord. Let's come about, O Lord, by your presence, by your presence, by your presence, your presence and guarantee. Let's, O Lord, we command us about, O Lord, us about, O Lord, every force, O Lord, that has been condemned. Unrest, O oh Lord. Lord, we come against it, O oh Lord. Every force of darkness, of unrest, O oh Lord, in the life of your people, in the life of your people, we come against it, O oh Lord. We come against it, O oh Lord. That unrest, O oh Lord, unrest situation, we come against it, O oh Lord. In their health, O oh Lord, in their destiny, in their business place, whatever force, O oh Lord, that has been command unrest upon them, O oh Lord. Lord, we command them to depart now. We command them to depart now. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray, 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 pray this morning for the presence of God to lead you and give you rest. Rest round about. Rest round about. Rest round about. Lord, we command rest, oh Lord. Rest, oh Lord, Jehovah. Rest, oh Lord, in the business place. Rest in this commission. Rest in their family. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, Jehovah. Oh Lord, Jehovah. This 2018, oh Lord, I shall enjoy all around rest. All around rest. All around the rest, all around the rest in my family, all around the rest in my destiny, all around the rest concerning my heart, all around the rest, my body, my body will not be in the hospital, will not be in the sick bed, oh Lord, Lord Jehovah, you are around about, oh Lord, by your presence, oh Lord, I secure, oh Lord, all around the rest, oh Lord, all around the rest, oh Lord, in my life, oh Lord, in my life, oh Lord, lift up your voice, pray, pray, pray this morning. By the presence of the Lord to guarantee you rest. Rest round about. Rest round about. In the name of Jesus, Lord Jehovah. Lord Jehovah, we pray this morning by your presence, O Lord. Lead us, O Lord. Lead us, O Lord. Direct your people. Direct your people. Guarantee them rest round about, O Lord. Rest round about, O Lord. Rest round about, O Lord. We come against, O Lord. On rest situation. On rest situation. On rest situation. They be faced on rest situation. Lord Jehovah, my case is different. My case is different. I shall enjoy all around rest, O Lord. All around rest, O Lord. In my family. All around rest, O Lord. In my business place. All around rest, O Lord. By your presence. By your presence. By your presence. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jehovah. Lord Jehovah. Look at my direction. Look at the direction of your people, O Lord. Lead them, O Lord. By your presence, O Lord. Let your presence, O Lord, do not leave your people. Do not leave your people in the hands of the enemy. In the hands of the enemy. Lord, your presence, oh Lord. When your presence lead your people, when your presence go into your people, the enemy are afraid, oh Lord. We command, oh Lord. The enemy shall be afraid of your people. The enemy will not touch your people. Sickness will not touch your people. Affliction will not touch your people. Your Lord Jehovah, your presence command, oh Lord. Oh Lord Jehovah, your presence command, oh Lord. Leading, oh Lord. Direction, oh Lord. All around rest, O oh Lord. Your people, O oh Lord, your people shall possess a possession. They shall possess a land, O oh Lord, that you are giving them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. By your presence, O oh Lord, the enemy will subdue themselves, O oh Lord. Your people will take that land, O oh Lord. That that is full of milk and honey, they will possess it, O oh Lord, by your presence, O oh Lord, by your presence, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Be the glorified, be the magnified. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord of Lord. Lord Jehovah, let your presence lead your people. Go ahead, O oh Lord. Direct your people. Lead them, O oh Lord. Guide them, O oh Lord. Keep them, O oh Lord. Keep them, O oh Lord. Preserve them, O oh Lord. Only you can keep your people. Only you can watch over them, O oh Lord. The watchman that watch them, O oh Lord, is in vain, O oh Lord. Unless you watch over your people, O oh Lord. Lord Jehovah, only you can watch over them. Only you can keep them, O oh Lord. We look up unto you, O oh Lord, for your keeping, O oh Lord. We look up unto you, O oh Lord, for preservation, O oh Lord. We look up unto you, O oh Lord, for Leading, O oh Lord, we look up to you, Lord, for direction, O oh Lord, by your presence, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray, O oh Lord Jehovah. 
Let your presence go into your people, O oh Lord. Guarantee them rest round about, O oh Lord. Rest, O oh Lord, in their health, O oh Lord. Rest in their family. Rest in their finance, O oh Lord. Rest in their family. Rest in their business place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever force that wants to in the O oh Lord, they are rest, O oh Lord. To cause on rest, O oh Lord, Jehovah, in their destiny, O Lord. We come against it, O oh Lord. We put an end unto it, O oh Lord. By your presence, O oh Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We worship you Jehovah. Be thou glorified. Be thou magnified. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. This morning you will collect your collection in the mighty name of Jesus. By the presence of God. By the word of God this morning you will receive your package. In Jesus mighty name. Put your hands together for the Lord and take your seat. As we invite the choir. Hallelujah. We want to exalt the King of Kings this morning for all that he has done for us since the starting of this fasting. We want to give him all the praise unto him and want to tell him that when we are on the mountains, he raised us up. So we are here today. He has placed us where we are. We want to give him all the praise, honor, adoration. Join us as we worship the King of Kings. Father, we exalt you, Lord.
said unto the children of Jacob to seek me in vain. It is not in the heart of God for his people to embark on a vain fasting and prayer. So I believe God that by the end of these 21 days of prayer and fasting there will be a reward. I said there should be a reward. There will be a reward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand and ask the Lord Lord, take notice of my heart's pantings, my heart's desires. Do not look away from me in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, I come before you today. And I ask, oh Lord, you have not asked the sons of Jacob to seek you in vain. You are not a vain God, oh Lord. I'm asking, oh Father, that you take notice of the desires of my heart, oh Lord. The yearnings of my heart. The pantings of my heart, O oh Lord. I cry unto you, O oh Lord. I cry unto you, mighty God. I cry unto you, eternal Father. I cry unto you, Father. I cry unto you. I lift up my voice unto you. My heart goes after you. My heart pants after you. My heart pants after you, O oh Lord. Let there be a connection with you. Let me be connected with you for answer. Let me be connected with you for solution. My heart pants after you. Like the, uh, like the heart is panting after the water brooks in the desert. My heart longs for you. My heart longs for you. My heart pants after you. 
oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God of all flesh, look in my direction, oh Lord. Send help to me, oh Lord. Men might disappoint me. I know you never disappoint. Oh Lord God Almighty, you do not disappoint anybody. You do not ask anyone in vain to seek you. Oh God, we are embarking on this fasting to begin the year and to open up the year 2018. We secure your presence. We ask for your power. Oh Lord, be with us. Oh Lord, stand with us in our families. Oh Lord, stand with us in the place of our assignments in our businesses and careers. Oh Father, I want to see your hand. I want to see your presence. I want to see your help, oh Lord. Send help, Father. Send help to me, oh Lord. Send help in the night time. Send help in the daytime. Oh God, oh God, I don't want to seek you in vain. You have not asked the sons of Jacob to seek you in vain. Oh Father, Father of all flesh, Father God Almighty, oh Lord, arise and have mercy on us. Arise, oh Lord, and solve the problem. Solve the problem in our lives. Oh Jehovah, solve the problem in our hearts. Oh mighty God, every challenge, every problem in our lives. Oh Father, we come to you for solution. We come to you for answer. The answer is with you. Oh Jehovah, your word says you will not withhold that which is by you. You will not withhold that which is good from your people. Release the answer, oh Lord. Oh Lord, release the solution, mighty God. We stand here and place a demand. We ask, oh Lord, for you to help us. Help us, oh Lord. Men might disappoint us, but you will not disappoint us. Oh Lord, arise and help us. Arise, oh Lord. Arise, oh Lord. Arise, oh Lord. We cannot have answers by ourselves. Lord, we depend upon you. We depend upon you, oh Lord. Fight every battle for us. Step in, oh Lord. Send help in our battles. You sent help to David. Day by day, they came to help David. His camp was strong because of the help he received from you. Oh Lord, in the battles of life, in year 2018, Father, send help on time. Send help in every place. Send help in, at every time. Send help on every issue. In the name of Jesus, we shall not lack help. We shall not lack help. We shall not lack your help. Oh Jehovah, lift up your voice and pray. Oh Father God, oh Father, send help to us. Send help our way. Send help, oh Lord. We don't want to be without the help of God. Send help in 2018. We are just beginning 2018, oh Lord. We are asking for your help. We are asking for your help. There is no one else we can run to. There is nowhere else we can go to. Our eyes are upon you, Jesus. Send help, O oh Lord. In our area of helplessness, send help, O oh Lord. In our weaknesses, O oh Lord, send strength to us. In our foolishness, O oh Lord, send your wisdom. Baptize us with your wisdom. Baptize us with your help. O oh Jehovah, O oh Jehovah, without you we are nothing. Without you we go nowhere. Without you, we can of our own selves do nothing. We depend upon you for wisdom. We depend upon you for understanding. We depend upon you for strength. Oh Jehovah, send help to us. Send help, oh Lord. Year 2018 shall not be like any other year. It shall be a year with a difference. Empower us with your presence. This is a year of all round possibilities. Whatever was impossible to us, Oh Jehovah, we come to you for help. We receive help from you. To, oh Lord, we receive help. We receive answers. We receive solutions. Oh Jehovah, send help, oh Lord. Send help by your power. Send help by your spirit. Baptize our hearts. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. We draw closer and closer unto you. In the name of Jesus, the power of darkness, we subdue them. The power of darkness, we subdue them. The power of limitations, we subdue them, O oh Lord. By your own power, we overcome the enemy. We overcome the enemy. They shall not rule over our destinies. The enemy shall not rule over us. In year 2018, we shall not be victims of the evil devices. We shall not be victims 
of the powers of darkness. They shall not overcome us. Lord, let your light shine. Shine in our lives. We shall overcome the devil. We shall overcome Satan in the name of Jesus. In our area of weakness, we receive strength. O Jehovah, arise and have mercy on us. Arise, O Lord, show yourself strong. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Lead us step by step. Lead us moment by moment in the year 2018. O Father God, O Father God, simplify every task for us. Give us wisdom, O Lord. Baptize our minds with the wisdom of God. Baptize our hearts with wisdom. Baptize us, O Lord. Baptize us, O Lord. Baptize us, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Are you ready to pray? God is ready to answer. Are you ready to pray? I say, are you ready to pray? Then God is ready to answer. Lift up your hands, say, Jehovah, my Father. <laughs> say, Jehovah, my Father. Whatever is moving my eyes away from what you want me to do, Lord Jesus, in 2018, I pray my eyes will look at your purpose, look at your plan for my life. I will take steps. Every spirit of laziness, every spirit of postponement that has made me to postpone things I should do year after year, month after month, week after week, I have kept postponing. I will do it another day. I will do it another week. I will do it another month. I will do it another year. It shall not be so in 2018. Oh, Father, every spirit of postponement, every spirit that has not allowed me to take steps in line with what you want me to do. Oh, Father, oh, Father, this year, 2018, it shall not be so. It shall not be so. I break the barrier of postponement. I break the barrier of laziness. I break the barrier of fear. The barrier of fear. Fear of failure. Fear that I will fail if I take steps. Oh, I break that barrier. In the name of Jesus, I destroy that power. That power of fear. That, that, that fear in my heart. That secret fear. That if I take a step this way, I might fail. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. I come against you with the blood of Jesus. I sanctify my heart with the blood of Jesus. I, re I remove my heart from your influence in the name of Jesus. Your influence shall not enter my heart. Oh, every spirit of fear we come against you in the name of Jesus. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. We destroy your we destroy your influence. Destroy your influence in the name of Jesus. We destroy your influence in our heart. We destroy you in our heart in the name of Jesus. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. This fear of failure, where are you coming from? We send you back to hell in the name of Jesus. You shall not influence our hearts. You shall not influence our lives anymore. 2018, we are free. I command liberty upon our hearts. I declare freedom in our hearts from the spirit of fear, fear of failure that has kept us behind, that has not allowed us to take steps year after year, year after year. Oh, Jehovah, in 2018, we are free from that fear. We are free from fear of failure. We are free, we are free. Oh, spirit of liberty, come upon our hearts. We take steps, we go forward. God said to Moses, Tell the people that they go forward. Let them not be afraid of the Red Sea. Go forward. The Red Sea is there. But go forward. That was a marching order. I pray we receive a marching order today. We shall not be hindered anymore. In the name of Jesus. We shall not be hindered anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus. We shall no more be hindered. Oh Lord, we take steps. We go forward. In the name of Jesus. Oh Jehovah, I will take steps this year. In the name of Jesus. The plans that are in my heart, I will take steps, O oh Lord. Every spirit of fear, every spirit of fear, fear of failure, we come against you. We destroy your power in the name of Jesus. We destroy your power. We destroy your influence in the name of Jesus. My heart is not open to you anymore in the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear, we curse you in the name of Jesus. Return to hell in the name of Jesus. You don't have a place in my heart. 
spirit of fear fear of failure fear of failure we cast you out 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 in the name of jesus we cast you out in the name of jesus we cast you out in the name of jesus we shall not influence us anymore you shall not influence us anymore in the name of jesus we are free from your attack every attack of fear we come against you in the name of jesus oh jehovah oh jehovah marco pali katalia kata aropa tokeri kambroso toria kata thank you precious lord oh jehovah in jesus mighty name whatever is hindering you from moving forward i pray that tonight that matter will be settled i pray that this morning that matter shall be settled whatever is hindering you from moving forward that matter shall be settled this morning in jesus mighty name lord open our hearts to your word and as we take time to pray today we take time to call upon you today i know you will send the answer you will release the solution and we shall come out of this assembly today liberated from the spirit of fear in jesus mighty name please get seated hallelujah liberty from the spirit of fear liberty from the spirit of fear part one liberty from the spirit of fear part one i have found out from scripture right from genesis that every time god had an assignment for a man an assignment that will make the man to pr make progress in life to expand in destiny the first thing god will say to the man is that fear not do not be afraid and i ask myself why is it that god first attacks fear in the hearts of people that he wants to he wants them to make progress in life he wants them to move forward in life the first thing that god attacks is that fear not the first thing he attacks is what fear not and then i suddenly find out that fear is a major hindering force in the hand of satan Fear is a principal hindering force in the hand of the enemy. Many people have not been able to move forward, not because they don't want to, but they are afraid. And so fear has kept many in captivity. But I prophesy that today, the captivity of fear in your life shall be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at in Genesis chapter 15. In Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, he said, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham. The first thing, the first thing that God attacked in the life of Abraham was the spirit of fear. That was a forcing attack. The spirit of fear. Many are held in captivity of the spirit of fear. They are afraid. What is the direction? Some are afraid of failure so they don't take steps in life. They are afraid they will fail. And that can keep a man frustrated for life. And at the end of the day, you have failed because that fear of failure has already destroyed your future. Then you become a failure that you were afraid of being. You were not able to take steps because you were afraid of failure. And not taking steps has already made you a failure. Is somebody hearing me this morning? I mean, you are afraid that you will fail so you are not taking steps. At the end of the day, not taking that step has made you a failure. So what you are afraid of, you now become 
that subject of fear. That is exactly what Job said. He said, the thing I greatly feared. Now look at Job chapter 3 verse 25. Please pay attention. Because today, liberty by the word of God is coming in the direction of somebody here. May that fear in your heart be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. In Job chapter 3 verse 25. See what the Bible says. Please, studio please. Be fast and get the scriptures out. Look at, can we read what the Bible, what the Bible is saying in that scripture? For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. Now, this is it. For instance, somebody is afraid if I marry, I will fail in marriage. And that fear kept him away from marrying. Now, not marrying has already made him a failure. Are you hearing me? So in that aspect, you have, so the thing you greatly feared has now come upon you. Did you see that? The thing I greatly feared has now come upon me, finally. So you are afraid of doing something. The fear is that you will fail if you venture out, if you step out to do that thing. If you step out to do business, you will fail as a businessman, as a businesswoman. If you step out to do something, you will fail. So that fear makes you not to do it. Now, not doing it has already made you a failure. For the Bible says, for the thing I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Did you see that scripture? Are you seeing that scripture? If you don't get any other scripture in your mind, please get that scripture today. So when fear keeps you away from doing something, fear of failure, you think if you do this thing, you will fail. Not doing it has already made the subject of fear to come to you. The subject of fear is failure. Not doing that thing has already made you a failure. Is somebody understanding? Are you sure you understand? It has already made you a failure. The thing you were afraid of has come unto you. The thing you greatly feared has come upon you. May you be released from the spirit of fear. One type of fear is the fear of failure, which we have discussed. The fear of failure. I'm afraid I will fail. And then that fear of failure keeps me away from taking steps. Now, that I am not taking steps has already made me a failure. So the thing you were afraid of has come to you. Amen? You will overcome fear in the name of Jesus. I say you will overcome fear in the name of Jesus. Fear shall not keep you in captivity. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. God, can you imagine that the first thing God dealt with in the life of Abraham was fear? He said, fear not. Fear not. He said to Abraham in that scripture, he had an assignment for Abraham. He had a great, 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 he was going to make him great. He was going to make his name great, everything. But he said, fear not, Abraham. Fear not. Every fear that is attacking your life, God will attack that fear today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fear always makes you to turn away from your pursuit. The moment fear catches you, you, sim you simply turn away from it. Whatever creates fear, and that fear is strong enough to catch you, makes you to turn away from it. Amen? If you are walking on the road, and then you become afraid, and the fear remains, you simply turn away from that place because you are afraid. <laughs> Amen? Fear keeps you away from your portion. It does not want you to take your portion. It's an instrument in the hand of Satan. But I pray that today that fear will break. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fear that the enemy has brought to you in your life that is limiting you. It's a factor, a great factor of limitation. It's a barrier. Fear is a barrier in life. Barrier to the fulfillment of the purpose of God for your life. Fear is a barrier. What is fear? It's a barrier. It's a barrier. 
The strength of fear is that it can make you to miss the purpose of God for your life. Amen? When God, number two, when God met Hagar, he made Hagar at the point of great depression. He was so depressed. He, he came to a point in life, he said, I'm giving up concerning life. No more thing to pursue. We have come to the end of the road. At that point, she left the baby that was in her hands. The water in the bottle that Abraham gave to her had been exhausted. No hope. There was no supermarket in the wilderness for her to go and buy water. There was no shop anyway for her to go and buy water and give to the child. So she came to a place and the fear of death caught her. She became afraid that this child is going to die. So she left the child somewhere. She was too afraid to see the child, her own child breathe, you know, take the last breath. She would prefer for the child to die without her seeing. She left the child and went somewhere and cried and cried. She came to a point in life, the lowest point in life. And see the first thing that God told Hagar when the angel visited was fear not. Fear not. It's always fear. It's always fear that God attacks. Now look at it this way. In Genesis, in Genesis chapter 21, the first thing the angel said was fear not. The first thing he said was what? The first thing he said was what? And God heard the voice of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord called to a guy out of heaven. Hey, hey guy, hey guy. What's the matter there? And said unto her, what do you, what ailed thee, hey guy? Fear not. He said he should do what? Fear not. Genesis 21 and verse uh, number 17. Fear not, fear not, fear not. Fear not when it comes from God. Please notice this, number one. Fear, number two, yes. Fear not. When it comes from God, it's not an empty word. All of the time God or his angel or a pastor or a, a prophet of God will tell you fear not. It doesn't always end there. Fear must first be destroyed. The next thing that comes is the promise of divine presence. It's always the next thing. The promise of divine presence is always the next thing. In the place we read in Genesis he said to Abraham, fear not, for my, I will be with you. I will perform the promise I gave you. He said, fear not, Abraham, I am your shield, divine presence. Fear not, I am your shield, divine presence. I am your shield, divine presence. I am your reward, great reward, divine presence. It's always the promise that follows fear not. He said to Agar, fear not, for God has heard. God is paying attention to you, even in your lowest point in life. So don't be afraid. You see, you need to understand this life, how this life works. And you need to learn to understand how, how to take your eyes away from transient things. The things of this world. The things of this life. How you feel. How you feel. What you see. What you hear. You need to know how to take that off your heart. Because they always create fear. They always create what? I always great fear. Those are the channels of fear. What you hear, channel of fear, it makes you afraid. We have heard what you see makes you afraid. How you feel makes you afraid. You just feel ah, it's like you feel you feel feverish. You the feeling, you feel it ah, and you are afraid that you are sick, isn't it? You are afraid that you are sick. 
So you get to a point that you must take your eyes away from your feelings, from what you see, from what you hear, from what you read about in the social media, and then you focus on God because even in that situation, that it looks as if you are right on the floor, God's presence is still very close to you. But fear can make you feel as if God's presence is so far away from you. That's why the first thing that God attacks is fear. He attacks the spirit of fear to clear the air so that you can feel his presence. Amen? So that you can feel his presence. So that you can feel his presence. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, fear is bad. Say, fear na bad thing. Say again to another person, fear na evil thing. Hallelujah. So you see God talking to Abraham, clearing the air, fear not. He went to Isaac, the same thing, he cleared the air, fear not. Jacob, he cleared the air, fear not. It's always fear, fear, fear is always the first thing that God attacks. If you are going to realize the purpose of God in 2018, you must deal with fear. Tell your neighbor, deal with fear. fear. Tell three people, deal with fear. fear. Lift up your hand and say, I will deal with fear. fear. Now, look at Isaac. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto him. It was also, it's always a time that things are tough. A time that things are hard. That's what creates fear. What do you see? What do you hear? Things are very hard. Things are very bad. There is famine. There is famine in the land. Hey, hey, hey. It creates fear. It's always that time that God comes to say, my presence is still there with you. Forget about the environment. My presence is there. Now look at it in Genesis 26. And the Lord appeared unto him, unto Isaac, unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not. It's always fear. The first thing that God destroys in the life of people who are not willing to move, who are not willing to obey him, is always fear. Fear not. Tell your neighbor, fear not. Can you see God now? He referred him to how he walked, how he helped his father. He said, I'm the God of Abraham. He's talking to the son. He said, I'm the God of your father. So watch out how I help your father. Fear not. He told his father, he told Abraham, fear not. He came to Isaac when there was trouble. He said, fear not. The same principle. God uses the same principle. So many people are held in captivity because of the spirit of fear. He said to him, fear not, for I am with you. Divine presence is always what follows fear not. Genesis 26 and verse 24. Genesis 26, verse 24. And the Lord appeared unto him in the, that same night and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not. For I am with you. Divine presence. For I am with you and will bless you. He gives you divine presence when he destroys fear. He gives you divine presence. He gives you what he will do. He tells you what he will do. You are not just walking under the shadow of the Almighty. Blessing also will locate you. This year, 2018, I pray that every spirit of fear that has attacked your heart, that has kept you in one place all these years, after this message, there will not be a trace of the spirit of fear in your heart. Can you shout a big amen? Can you shout a big amen? Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. And now you move a little bit. You see, you see, God is using the same principle on all the people. All the people. In Genesis 35 verse 17. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor. So it's always a time that it looks as if I'm, I'm finished. I'm finished. There's no more strength. Labor is not a thing you smile. Two days ago, our goat was in labor. Was it yesterday? Yesterday. But two days ago, <laughs> the goat in our house was in labor. <laughs> he all lay down like that. Ah, they called me. So I went and checked. Uh, he lay down like that. I said, you should, you should team up and uh, bring this thing out. <laughs> but he was down. 
Labor is not an easy thing. Are you hearing me? Labor not too easy. <laughs> labor not too easy thing. You are not laboring and smiling. There is no woman that is laboring and smiling. That's why husbands, you have to be very careful. When your wife is laboring, don't go very close. He can slap you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he can slap you very well. And then that time you just say, ah, thank you, madam. Please bring the baby out first. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not an easy thing. It's not something you do and you are smiling. Can you see what happened here? He said, and it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, fear not. You see, people that know God, they will always tell people that feel their end has come, fear not. Can you see the midwife now? May you catch the spirit of God. May you walk with the spirit of God. May you walk with the spirit of God. He said, fear not because you have a son. The midwife has already seen the, the, the boy coming out. He said, hey, don't be afraid. This son also, you have this one also. It's a son. You have this boy also. Amen. Now, what was the midwife doing? The midwife was telling, declaring the results. And told, telling her, take your eyes away from the pain. There is good news here. May somebody point your, uh, your eyes to something that will bring good news to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis 43 verse 23. And he said, peace be unto you. Fear not. You are God and the God of your fathers has given you treasure in your sacks. Hallelujah. Fear not. These are the people, Jacob now, you know, they went to Joseph and all of that. And then there was a cup in their sacks. He said, fear not, fear not. If fear can be destroyed in your life, I want you to know that by June, you will have such a testimony that you look back in 2017 and say, I, I was wasting time in 2017. God will bombard you with heavy weight results. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, would you destroy the spirit of fear? I pray that the spirit of fear shall be destroyed in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, look at it in Genesis 46 verse 3. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt, for I will there make of thee a great nation. Fear not, fear not. I ask myself, how come that God is always dealing with fear in the lives of people? And I got the answer not too far away. So that they can attain greatness. Fear can keep you from being great. You can remain small till you die if you allow fear in your life. I break the yoke of that fear. I destroy the yoke of that fear in the mighty name of Jesus. In Genesis 50 verse 21, Now therefore fear ye not. Fear is always the first thing. Fear ye not. Don't be afraid. I will nourish you and your little ones. Joseph now is telling his brethren, fear, don't be afraid. Fear not. Fear not. This fear we are talking about is not like always, it's not always like the fear that when you see a masquerade, they say, no, no, no. It's like you want to do something. For instance, you should go into business. But you are now afraid that if you go into business, you will fail. My question for you is this. The same mind that is telling you you will be afraid can also tell you you, you will fail, can also tell you you will succeed. It's the same mind. You don't need another mind. It's the same mind. You only need to recondition it. You only need to recondition it. The same mind. The same mind that is telling you, hey, you will, you will fail. That same mind, if you receive enough word, enough light, enough illumination, you will turn around and say, oh, I can succeed. Because there is always also success. Listen, listen. In life, take this one, number three. In life, Failure is not closer to you than success. In life, failure is not closer to you than success. Success is also very close to you. But most of the time, people appreciate the fact that failure is close. 
and success is very far. No, that's a lie of the devil. Success is not far. Success is also close to you. Then you now turn to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 19. He said, I keep before you. Did you see it? I keep before you. Is it Deuteronomy 30, verse 19? Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. He said, I call heaven and earth to be a witness today that I keep before you life and death. So life is not closer to you than death. And death is not closer to you than life. Death and life. Listen, do you know that if somebody wants to die, he can still die? If somebody wants to die today, he says, today I'm going to die, you will die. Do you understand what I'm saying? So death is, death, death is there. Life is also there. If somebody also decides, I'm going to live and not die, then you live, isn't it? But death is not closer to you than life. Neither is life closer to you than death. It is the choice that you make. That I choose to live and not die. If somebody chooses to die today, he will die. And nobody can stop him. He will die today. Because there is also death today. But there is also life today. Are you hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? This are the truths that you need to know about life and existence. Can you say a big amen to that? Can you say a big amen to that? These are the truths that you need to know. These are the truths that you need to know about life and existence. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. You need to see that. And know that failure is not closer to you than success. It's not. Success and failure, both of them are very close to you. So choose which one you go. It's not like death and life. They are very close to you, every anybody. Death and life is very close to anybody. Are you hearing me? You may not agree that, but that is, that's the truth. Because if somebody decides to die today, he will die. That means death is there. Death is always there. Life is also always there. How do I know? Look at what the scripture is saying. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Can we read that? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. <laughs> blessing and cursing. That means blessing and cursing is like success, which is blessing, failure, which is cursing. They are all there. Therefore, what you have to do, because these things are as close to you, there's not one thing that is closer to you than the other. What you have to do is now choose. Oh my God, I thought you would jump up and shout. What you are to do is what? Choose. Choose. What are you to choose? God is now saying, I counsel you. I advise you. I, I, I'm telling you to choose what? Life. Because what you choose will come to you. You can only see what you choose. Choose life. That both you and your seed may enjoy the outcome of life. You can make a choice. You can choose to start that business this week. I'm telling you, today you can start that business. You can choose. It's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice that matters. The principal matter in this thing, in this life, is choice. Choose to live. And you will see that death will not, will not come to you and say, no, no, you must choose me. Mm. No. Choose to succeed in life. Failure will not come and say, no, no, I, I must force myself. Mm -mm. It doesn't. They obey your choice. They obey what? Your choice. They obey what? Your choice. A medical doctor, I read in the papers in Lagos, he got so depressed and all of that, he went to a high bridge in Lagos. Some of those bridges over across water, very high up, and then he jumped, he plunged into the lagoon and died. So death is there. Are you hearing me? 
He chose to die. A choice. And nobody could stop him. He chose to do what? To die. And so he died. To confirm scripture. To confirm. I keep before you life and death. And God said choose life. He said no. I won't choose life. I will choose death. It's so he died. Do you now understand? I want you to understand. That's why I take time to preach, uh, to preach and analyze and explain. Because I want you to really understand. There is nothing that is closer to you than the other. Failure is not closer to you than success. They're all there. You choose to succeed. Say with me, I will choose to succeed. Hallelujah. Fear must die. What must die? Fear must die. If you like, you can even take that as the title of the message. Fear must die. Fear must die. Hallelujah. Amen. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 21. Now therefore fear ye not. That's what Joseph said. Fear ye not. Don't be afraid. What is he saying? Don't be wondering how will I eat. Huh? Don't be wondering how will I eat because I will nourish you. The supplier of food is there. He's telling you don't be afraid. Don't be don't have a sleepless night. How will I eat? Joseph said, I'll take care of that. Amen? I'll take care of that. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Don't be afraid. You see, if you understand God, walking with God is very easy. Hallelujah. Walking with God is very... Walking with God is very... Hallelujah. Now, fear makes people... Now, let me tell you something. Fear makes people to take wrong decisions. Fear makes people to do what? Write it down. Fear makes people to take wrong decisions. And even if that sentence is not, is not complete, fear makes people to take wrong decisions. Even if the subject of fear is not there. Even if the subject of fear is not there. Now, let me show you in scripture. Hallelujah. Hmm. And in Exodus chapter 2 verse 14, And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Remember when the Egyptian and an Israelite fought, and then Moses went there and killed the Egyptian and fought for his people, his, his person. And then he killed the Egyptian. And then, hear what he said. He said, and he said, who made thee a judge, a prince and a judge over us? Intend, intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? Do you want to kill me? This another day. He now saw an Israelite fighting with an Israelite. So he went to separate them. When he saw an Egyptian fighting with an Israelite, he killed the Egyptian. Are you following? Because he saw himself as a deliverer to deliver Israel. The, this is another day. He now saw an Israelite fighting with an Israelite. He now separated them. Don't fight your brethren. You people are brothers. Don't fight. And one of them said, Hey, who made you a judge over us? Who made you a prince over us? Do you want to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? Hear this. That statement, see how it created fear in the heart of Moses. In Exodus chapter 2, and Moses feared and say, surely this thing is known. It might not have been known beyond these people. But fear made Moses to generalize and see what happened. He now went on exile. Nobody sent him on exile. Fear can make your, you to go, your, put your destiny on exile. Fear. You can put your own destiny on exile with fear. Moses went on exile for 40 years. Long time. He, because he said, probably it was after he has gone that people began to say, ah, where is Moses? Why did he go on exile? He said, ah, he killed some. So what he thought people had known even happened after he left. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because that people did not see Moses again will make people to make inquiries. Why has he run away? He said, ah, he killed one Egyptian. So the thing that 
if he was there, he wouldn't have spread, he now spread beyond. So that's what fear does. Fear makes you, you enslave your destiny. You can enslave your destiny with fear. I'm saying that today, this morning, any destiny that has been enslaved by fear, that destiny, I command liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. I command liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. God will set your destiny free. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. God will set your destiny free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fear ye not. Remember when Moses was moving the people. In obedience to the instruction of God. To the land of Canaan. They got to the Red Sea. They got to anywhere in the wilderness. And Moses would say fear ye not. So I Get to look at this thing. After I have seen too many fear ye not, fear ye not, fear ye not. I came to accept that fear must be dealt with in the lives of God's people. That's why I have come this morning to deal with fear in your heart. You will make progress in the name of Jesus. You will go places in the name of Jesus. Anyone that fear has trapped, I command you, release in the name of Jesus. Fear shall not trap you. I say fear shall not trap you. Fear shall not trap you in the name of Jesus Christ. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. From the grip of fear in the name of Jesus. Take steps, make progress. This is 2018. If you shall not be found in what is same place in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me read Judges chapter 1. I mean Joshua chapter 1. The book of Joshua chapter 1. Hallelujah. Now, let me just give you a brief introduction to this, what I'm going to say. Remember, Moses had died. Joshua has taken over to begin to do a lot of things. God had defined his assignment, and then it, it was clear. And then <laughs> God, God began to say, amen. You know, every place that the sole of your feet shall step in, I have given to you great promises, great promises. Great prom Men and brethren, let me let you know. That God has given you a promise does not mean you will, you will not fight battles. In fact, you will fight battles because of the promise of God upon your life. Why is the devil throwing heavy roadblocks on your path? Because he's afraid of what is coming out of you. He's afraid of your destiny. Why do we cage lions? Why don't we cage chicken huh? why don't we, do you know what it means to cage why are we caging a lion more than we cage a cat why why do we why are we caging a lion why can I tell you why because people are afraid of what will happen when it comes out Why don't we cage a cat like that? People are not afraid of what the cat will do when it comes out. In fact, when it comes out, it will just be doing like meow, meow, <laughs> playing with you. So people are not afraid. So they don't cage it. But with a full-blown forest-trained lion, they cage it and reinforce the cage because they are afraid of what will happen when this lion comes out. So if the devil is fighting you too much, they know that your destiny is a great destiny. Do you understand what I'm saying? The enemy is afraid of what you will become. It's, it's, they say giants, the devil is afraid of. So he put all manner of roadblocks so that you would not manifest who God says you should be. You will now sit down in one place and be complaining about obstacles and be complaining about barriers. And then the devil is laughing at you. He's afraid of what is coming out. That's why he's throwing roadblocks. When you are driving, he's throwing things on your, on your road, on your path. But I came this morning to tell you, don't be afraid. Just keep going. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So we see God coming to Joshua and say, Joshua, 
any place the sole of your feet shall step upon, I give it to you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. He tried to encourage him. He said, Moses, you know, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to do all my counsel. I'm going to fulfill all my counsel in your life. But he said, look at it. In one chapter, you see what God said. He said, there shall be no man that shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That means he put all men on the earth under the soul of one man. He said, no man, no matter him, no matter who he is. When he sees you, their defenses will break down. When you step in, their, 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 their witches will, will be silent. They will go on recess. When you step into a city, all the witches will go on recess. They cannot manifest in your presence. You carry the magnetic presence of God. He said all of these great, great and amazing things over the life of, of Joshua. But at the end, he said this, be strong and very courageous. That means don't be afraid. Fear, you see, number five, no matter what you carry, fear can make you look as if you don't carry anything. Did you hear what I just said? No matter the grace of God upon your life, if you are a man that is easily given to fear, you will not amount to anything. Even though the grace of God is on you, even though great anointing is on you, but if you are given to fear, you will not amount to anything. Hallelujah. If you have the grace enough to kill a crocodile by your hand and you are given to the spirit of fear, you will not be able to kill a lizard. Is somebody hearing me? You will not be able to kill a lizard. That is how fear can, can destroy the power of God in your life. And God knew it. So he told Joshua, be thou very strong and very courageous. Be strong and courageous. If you must see these things come to pass, be strong. If you must see these things come to pass, be strong and very courageous. He said in verse, in verse 6, Be strong and of good courage, for unto these people shall thou divide for inheritance the land. Hallelujah. Verse 7, only be thou strong. Can you see? It's so important. He told him in verse 6, be strong and very courageous. Verse 7, he said, only, that means you can only see these things realized if you are strong and very courageous. What is he saying? He said to Joshua, you must have the lion's heart. In this life, if you are going to be a man to greatness, you must have the lion's heart. You must have what? All this chicken heart you have is what is keeping you on the floor. You must have the lion's heart. I baptize you today with the lion's heart in the name of Jesus Christ. You must be very courageous so you can realize your destiny. Why? There are too many people, they don't want you to amount to anything. Are you hearing me? People don't really want you to realize the purpose of God for your life. Even from your family. They don't. They don't. By the time greatness begins to come your way, you see they change the approach. They change the approach. They change the approach. Hallelujah. They change the approach. If you want to test them, just have admission in Harvard University. Go and show to your people. I'm leaving next month. See my admission. Harvard. They say, hey, ah, you they go Harvard. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> they run down to go and consult somebody to stop you. Are you hearing me? Then they will come back to you and say, when are you really moving? We wish you well, oh, you can go. Then when you leave the place, they go back and say, do that thing very well, oh, you must not go. You must not go. <laughs> but you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. So God in verse 6 said, be strong, be courageous in verse 7. He said, only be thou strong. That means you can only realize what I've said. If you are courageous. Hallelujah. And in verse, in verse 7, he said so. In verse 9, the same thing. I have not high commanded you. I'm the one talking. I'm the one commanding you to do it. To stand there. Be strong and of a good 
courage. In one chapter, he said, be strong. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. He said to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of their faces. You know, the faces of some people are very terrifying, especially the Sanhedrin. They carry Taliban beards like that, they sit down like that. And, we do. <laughs> and God said to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of their faces. You carry the grace to tear down and to pull down and to destroy and to build. Don't be afraid of your faces. I impart upon you today the courage to go forth and do the grace of God, what the grace of God has already planted in your heart. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus, lift up your hand. Say, Jehovah, my father, every spirit of fear, I cast it out. Open your lips and pray. Every spirit of fear that has kept me in captivity, that has kept me stagnated in life, I cast it out. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Spirit of fear, I cast you out. I cast you out of my heart, out of my life in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear, every spirit of fear, I cast you out. 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 I destroy your power. I destroy your power. I destroy your power. In Jesus' mighty name. We are going to take time and pray because this is a major hindrance, hindering force in the hands of Satan that is keeping many children of God behind. And they have not been able to amount to the fullness of the purpose of God for their lives. The spirit of fear. Some have not been able to marry on time because they are afraid. Some have not been able to uh, succeed on time. They should do business that God will expand. But they are busy, you know, in some other areas. And they have not been able to do it. Look, listen to me. Show me one millionaire in this world or billionaire that is doing one thing to become a millionaire and a billionaire. Show me. No, show me. If you cannot, go and Google. If you cannot now, say, Pastor, I'm coming. I will tell you, go and Google. Show me one person. How oh, this God make me a millionaire? It's wrong prayer. Wrong prayer. Wrong prayer. It's wrong prayer. I'm telling you. It's wrong prayer. Oh God, oh God, make me a millionaire. God does not make people millionaire. God, what God does is this, he gives you ideas. And asks you, even if God gives you an idea and you do nothing about it, you fail. With that idea, you become a failure. A mockery. People mock you because you do nothing about the idea. You still have to put it to work. You must celebrate the grace for hard work. Celebrate it. Dangote is the richest man, not in Africa. It's wrong that you think it's Africa. Of black descent, that's all the black men in this world, is richer than them. The richest man of black descent that is all the black people in India Indians they have black Indians in Brazil blacks are many anywhere in the world you see blacks they say Dangote is richer than them every black man is the richest man and he started with 50,000 naira in 1978 huh Fifty thousand naira. There are some people that had fifty thousand naira at that time. They were in hotels drinking and uh, eating. <laughs> now, that man I just mentioned now, is it one thing that is making him a, that that has moved him to that place? So he produces water, he produces cement, he produces uh, everything, salt. It produce everything. You cannot become a millionaire, billionaire doing one thing. He says, I'm doing one thing, one thing. You can't. It's not possible. It, it produces, um, is it macaroni or something? Eh? Spaghetti. Everything you need. Maggie. Maggie. 
and then you are working in one place, you know, like that. They pay you, they pay you one million two hundred. Ah, one million two hundred. You are now working like crap. You know, crap. Crap is not big, but when it's working, it's working like this. You are now working like crap all around the place, harassing people for what? You are very poor, very poor. You don't know yet. You don't know yet. It's because you have not taken time to look at your life to know that you are very poor, very, very poor. like crap. <laughs> In your family, they are bowing down for you. Don't, don't be smiling. Go. Is, is, it, is it brother? Brother. And you give them 50,000. Take on these words. You have God backing you up. I told some of you, when you pay tight, pay yourself 5%. Put it in an account. Can you imagine if you had obeyed me? I'm your father. I'm not just your preacher. Yesterday, I told people, I said, I have one father. I have one spiritual father, Bishop Abu. I may have many other leaders, but I have one father. I'm your father. No matter how old you are, you are my son. I gave birth to you by the gospel of Christ. I gave birth to you by the gospel of Christ. And you need to obey me if you want to succeed in life. He said, if you want to be established, obey God. But if you want to prosper, obey the prophets. So I know you're obeying God, but you will not prosper until you obey the prophets. Because I give you instruction. When you take that instruction, somebody, if he can take this instruction today and kill fear, by August, it will be a, a financial giant. How can the devil hold you in captivity when I'm preaching to you? Don't, don't make my, the gospel I preach to look like it's not working well, but by the fear you allow in your hearts. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Liberty from the spirit of fear. Amen. If you are in this ministry, you have not read this book, you are not in this ministry. Are you hearing me? You are just roaming about. If you have not read this book, Courage to Do More in Life, all the money that you have in the world, make sure you buy that book today. Today. This book, Courage to Do More in Life. They are photocopying this book in America. They, look, they call me and say, can we photocopy it? I say, go ahead, photocopy it. This book. Somebody took it, just like ancient authorities that I wrote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This book, Courage to Do More, and it will destroy fear in your life. Read this book. It's one of my books. Read it, and it will destroy fear. Courage to Do More in Life. Buy the book, go and read. If you don't have money, sell your shoe. Sell your shoe and buy it. If you don't have a shoe, sell your shirt. Tomorrow on Sunday, wear singlet and come. They will put you somewhere and then um, you stay. See, wear singlet. Sell your clothes and buy this book. Courage to do more in life. Camera, can you zoom it a bit? Eh? You should know what to do now. I'm showing a book. You are not zooming. You don't know how to zoom? Okay, don't worry if you don't know it. Yeah, that's a book, Courage to Do More in Life. This book, this book, this one book, they are on the table of judges, some judges in this country. Courage to Do More in Life. I gave it to them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You are free. I don't see fear holding you in captivity again. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I break the yoke of fear in my heart. Break it. Break it. Break the yoke of fear in your heart. Break the yoke of fear in your heart. Break the yoke of fear in your heart. Courage to do more in life. Courage to do more in life. Courage to do more in life. 
God said to Joshua, Be thou very courageous. Be thou very courageous. Be thou very courageous. Courage to do more in life. Glory to God. In Jesus' mighty name. You know what I used to do when I began? I used to give my books free to people, to church people. Later I stopped. Because I know they were not reading it. And because it's free, some people, when I'm giving next Sunday, somebody that has collected it, he doesn't even understand. He thinks the more you have in your shelf, so he collects another one. I say, no, this is not a good thing. God didn't tell me to be a foolish person. I'm not giving anybody. In fact, this book, I'm going to change all the prices of my books. After today, I'm going to change. The books will go for 250,000 liels. If you can't buy it, you leave it. So it will be now for people who actually want to dig in to see that will go and buy. I'm okay with that. But for now, today and tomorrow, you can still buy the same amount. I've come up and announced all my books. All of them. Because I know I have many people who have their, these books in their shelves. They are not reading. They just collect, collect and keep. Next Sunday, I distribute free. They come out again, collect. There are some people they have collected three times. The same book. This is not a kara. Fry fry, no. Not to fry fry. Are you hearing me? This is not to. So it will now be somebody that wants to unveil something that will now go and buy. And when he buys it, he will sit down and devour it. Search the scripture. Jesus told the people. Search the scripture in it. Is you is the written of me. You want to break the yoke of fear? Buy this book. For today, it's still 50,000, isn't it? For today. Yeah, but after today, tomorrow, I will also announce it's gone. So it will now be for people who want to. Want to. The main speaker in Fleming, huh? Prophet. Um, What's his name again? The prophet that is speaking there, he saw one of my books. Where is uh, this man? Is he, is he, is he Dick in, uh, John? He's not around. Okay. He saw my book, Overcoming Ancient Authority in Nigeria. I don't know how he got it. He called, he looked at the number, he called the printer. John told me, uh, that was 2013. He told me somebody called him. He said he's a prophet something. He mentioned the name. He said, he said, who wrote that book? He said, that book, that book is a book. You, are, you have it though, but you have not read it. <laughs> you are free today in the name of Jesus Christ. Be liberated from the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand. I decree in the name of Jesus. Anyone here that the whip of fear is holding your destiny in captivity, I command, be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Whatever you want to, you have to begin to pursue things early enough. Begin to pursue. In January, you can't be playing in January. That's why we take time to fast. It's so that you get enough, gather energy, spiritual energy to move in February. In February, I want to see people from this assembly who will come to me, hey, I'm undertaking this project. I am beginning. The, I say, go ahead. Receive grace. I impart him with grace. Go ahead. I want to start this business. If you have a shop, they are coming to tell me you have a shop. You, I've known you for one shop in three years ago. You are still having one shop now. I know I will just move away from you and say this one. I just leave you alone. Because you should have another shop. Are you hearing me? should have another shop, then you go to Guinea Conakry and have a shop there and put somebody there. Then you go to Gambia, you go to Nigeria. Don't be afraid. Fear not. You should have a business in Nigeria. Are you hearing me? And you will make it. Every, you know, because in Nigeria already you have a big advantage over all other nations. You have a big advantage. The advantage is the number. You have number. You can make good business and good money. If this church is in Lagos, well, okay, don't worry. <laughs> you have an advantage of number. You should think of having a business in Nigeria. Are you hearing me? Think of having a business in Nigeria. 
go there and rent a shop and enlarge your brain, enlarge your mind. The world, get ready to explore this world. Some of you should be planning to have businesses in America. Not to go and be cleaning the bum bum of old people alone. No. You should have business in America. That will bring you dollars. You got business in America, business in Europe. I want to expand your mind. Are you hearing me? Courage. Receive it in Jesus' name. Courage, receive it in Jesus' name. Courage, receive it in Jesus' name. Courage, receive it in Jesus' name. Receive courage to do great things. Amen? You are a hairdresser? Call somebody in another country and say, I can come and work there for six months and come back. You have a shop here. Open a shop there when you go. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Nothing will hold you down again. Nothing will hold you down again. All this one, I don't have money, I don't have money, you must not say it. Are you hearing me? There are many businesses you can start with that money. Many. There are some people who are, who are on rentals, they rent chairs, and the chairs are rusty. Nobody is hiring them. Wear your clothes, put on your tie, go to town, look for people who want to do party and want to do things and they need chairs. Connect with the man that has chairs. Arrange with him 30% or 20% or 40% and bring the contact. You don't need money to do that. Give him business. He gives you your money, you put it in your pocket. There are many things you can do many things you can do. Prosperity comes to you by reason of ideas that God is putting in your heart. My prayer is that this year, you will not be full of stories. You will be full of testimonies. You will not be full of stories. You will be full of testimonies. You will be full of testimonies. You'll be full of testimonies. The story is too much. Receive grace for that in Jesus' name. Please get seated. We are going to be handling this tomorrow. I'm coming out from a very strange angle on the same thing to steer the people then from, from Monday we are beginning to look beyond the world and look at heaven. Amen? We'll be teaching you things about heaven and how to prepare you for the final victory. So me final, final victory. But we had to, normally you start from the known to the unknown. You know, you start in any kind of thing. Start from, so that's why we use two weeks to deal with the issues deal with the issues, you can be victorious. You can have victory in this world. But then don't miss the final victory. So I will be teaching on how not to miss the final victory. But that should not stop you from having victories in life. Victories in life. That's why we are breaking the yoke of fear this weekend. We are ending the week that way. And then from next, um, next week, we get on the move. Hallelujah. We will get there. I said we will get there. I said we will get there. Please close your eyes and think about your life. Is there anything that is making you afraid? What is it that is making you afraid? And that fear is holding your destiny in captivity. Job said in Job chapter 3 verse 25 the thing I greatly feared has come unto me and that which I was afraid of has happened in my life. Whatever yoke of fear is holding your life in captivity, I pray that that is broken today in the name of Jesus Christ. You must not be afraid to take steps. Don't allow fear to cripple you. Never allow fear to cripple your destiny. Don't allow fear to cripple your life. 
take steps. If God has given you a business idea, take steps. Hallelujah. Take steps. Don't be afraid you will fail. Why must you think you will fail? Why can't you think you will succeed? Hallelujah. Why can't you think you will succeed? It's the same heart that you are using to think that you will fail. You can use the same heart and know and think that you can succeed. Hallelujah. You will succeed. I say you will succeed. You will succeed. You will succeed. I pray for that grace to rest upon you. I pray for that grace to rest upon you. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' precious name. Everybody close your eyes. I want to pray for you and ask that the grace of God will come upon you. Destroy the spirit of fear. And destroy every cobweb of fear in your heart. And then God will quicken you by his power. Make you courageous. Make you to take steps. Make you to move. This is a new year. You must not be telling old stories. Must not be telling old stories. You must not be telling old stories. You must not be telling old stories. This is a new year. In the name of Jesus Christ. And, and, then, and then we will hear your testimony. I say we will hear your testimony. I say we will hear your testimony. In Jesus mighty name. I want you to begin to follow Jesus by giving your life to him today. Begin to follow Jesus. Give your life to Jesus today. It's a good thing to do. The best thing indeed. I gave my life to Jesus 1990. And from that time it's been from glory to glory. It's been a wonderful experience. So I want to encourage you today. That it's not just about coming to church, sitting down, listening and going out. We're not talking about religion. We are talking about relationship with Jesus. Relationship with God. You can start that relationship today. And God will unfold his secrets unto you. And my prayer is that today if you will decide. Having heard the word. Harden not your heart. And decide to follow Jesus. And the Lord will receive you. And take your name off the book of death. Take your name off the book of failure. And write your name in the book of life. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, lift up your hand. Just like my hand is lifted, just lift up your hand. Up, in the, up, up, up. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to give your life to Jesus. Is there any person you want to be born again today? Hallelujah. Everybody, lift up your right hand to God. Everybody. Say, Lord Jesus, cleanse me with your blood. Cleanse me. Make me pure. Make me holy. From today, I am. From today, I confess that I am. Say from today, I confess that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say again, from today, I confess that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. A clap offering to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Let's open our mouth and appreciate Jesus this morning. This wonderful message. God has destroyed the spirit of fear in your lives. Has given us boldness and courage so that we will move from story to glory. Open your mouth and appreciate Jesus for that. Thank God for this early morning message that we have received. Thank God for the courage you have got right now. I know something has dropped inside of you. I know something is changing in you. I know idea has come to you now. I know God has planted something inside of you. And the grace to get it done is made it available. Open your mouth and appreciate God. Because this year will not come and go like the other years. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for setting us free from the captivity of fear. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank for your servant, O oh Lord. We pray that you 
Pour your grace and anointing upon him more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is offering time. Offering time. Amen. Beloved, one of the major reasons people don't give is fear. The Bible records in the book of First Kings, chapter 17, the story, the encounter of Elijah with that woman of Seraphat. Let me read a few verses, verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. He said to her, To do what? To do what? Go and do so, and as thou hast said, But make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus the Lord as God of Israel, for thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of me shall not wait, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Praise the Lord. You can see fear in the heart of that woman. She didn't want to give because she thought it wasn't enough. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, she was ready to finish the balance and just die. But when she did what God asked her to do, someone of God asked her to do, she didn't die, her son did not die, and she had excess. Praise the Lord. Beloved, don't be afraid to give this year. Don't be afraid to take step when it comes to the things of God. Let's rise to our feet, package the offering, befitting offering. Don't be afraid to give quality offering to Jesus. That is the way to have more. Lift that offering to Jesus and open your mouth, present it to him. Lord, I celebrate your grace. I appreciate you, God, for the anointing for plenty you have released in the assembly. I pray my portion will not be denied me. As I sow this seed today, O oh Lord, thank you for my hand to go and enlarge it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Pay attention. Tomorrow, make sure you bring somebody to church. 8 o'clock in the